The Remove tool is Photoshop's latest addition to its array of object removal tools, and at first glance, it kind of feels like magic. But let's take a closer look at how this tool functions, where it thrives, where it fails, and whether or not it can replace other common object removal tools inside of Photoshop, like the Clone Stamp tool. Now, to make sure that you walk away from this video with a full view of what the Remove tool can and cannot do, we're gonna go through three different examples here. The first one's going to be a simple version of using this tool. The second example will be using the remove tool with selections. And the final example will touch on some reasons and areas that the remove tool doesn't work very well. I'll also be leaving all those timestamps below this video so you can skip ahead to whatever part most interests you if you already have some experience with this tool. But for those who are totally new to this tool, let's break down exactly how it works and how you can use it non-destructively. To access the remove tool inside of Photoshop, it's hidden within the healing brushes inside of the toolbar. But if you have any of these other tools tools active, just remember that you can click and hold on that icon and then you'll find the remove tool here. Now, unlike so many other tools in Photoshop that are really complicated with so many settings and things to remember, the remove tool keeps things pretty straightforward because up in the options bar, we have one option to set the size of our brush. So you can see my brush cursor here. If I increase the size of that brush, now that cursor will be larger, but we actually never really need to touch this size setting at all because we can just use the bracket keys on our keyboard. So the bracket keys will scale down the brush or or up the brush just like the regular brush tool inside of Photoshop. Now, as for these other two settings here, we have the sample all layers, which is something that I would recommend making sure it is checked at all times. The reason for this is that way we can go down to the layers panel and create a new layer. We could call this layer to object removal. And now all of our remove tool adjustments can be made on this new transparent layer separately from our image layer. And therefore we're not gonna be editing destructively. So if we ever make a mistake, we can easily go back or even completely remove them just by deleting the layer that we made our object removal adjustments on. So this is a much better option to consider doing instead of just making those removal adjustments directly on your image layer. Now the next setting we have is the remove after each brush stroke, which I'll show you what that means in just a second here. So the basic way that this tool works is that all you have to do is click and highlight an area like so. A pink highlight will appear as you click and drag your cursor and whatever is inside of that pink highlight, Photoshop will try to remove for you. In this case, because I have sample all layers checked and the object removal layer selected as well, anything that the remove tool does will be applied directly onto this transparent layer. So we're editing non-destructively. So because because I have just clicked and painted over this area, nothing has been removed yet because I have the remove after each brush stroke unchecked. So that means I could paint in multiple areas. I could scale down my brush and just continue to paint over different areas and adding more pink highlight AKA the areas that we're going to remove. Once you have gone and painted over all of the areas that you want to remove from your photo, you can just press the check mark in the upper options bar or press enter on your keyboard. I'll press the check mark to apply those changes. And what Photoshop will do is basically find other pixels from within your photo to replace the areas beneath the pink highlight. When it comes to rebuilding straight lines or simple textures like that of the water back here, this remove tool does an amazing job at doing that. Now let's go and compare how this adjustment is a little bit different if we have the remove after each brush stroke enabled this time. So I'll check that to turn it on. This time, if I click and drag over an area and I let go, it will automatically be removed for me. So rather than having to go up and press the check mark or enter on my keyboard, every time I paint over something on the photo and I let go of my mouse, it's going to remove that area for me because I have the remove after each brush stroke enabled. Now, the reason that you might wanna have this enabled is when you're removing small objects from your photo. However, when you want to remove larger, more complex objects that are a little bit harder to make a perfect highlight around, in one single click, that is when you want to uncheck the remove after each brush stroke. So for example, let's say this rock here, I could consider maybe a little bit of a harder thing to remove in just one single click. So what I can do is go and uncheck the remove after each brush stroke. So now I can go and click and paint over an area, let go of my cursor, and nothing is going to be removed quite yet. And then now I can continue to click and paint over the areas I'd like to remove, scale down my brush to a different size, and 
continue to just add to that area. Once I'm happy with that pink highlight and so it's covering the object that I want to remove plus a little bit extra around the edges, I'll press the check mark or enter on my keyboard to save those changes and Photoshop will automatically try to remove that area for me. Now in this case, it didn't do the perfect job. It didn't complete the horizon line and some of the waves look a little bit weird. And the great thing about the remove tool is that you can easily go and just paint over the same area multiple times to fix up those types of things. So what I'll do is go up to remove after each brush stroke and enable it by making sure it is checked. And then I'll scale up my brush a bit and paint over the area of issue right here. And it will automatically fill that area in for me. I'll go and do the same thing over here with the wave and it will automatically fix that up as well. Now, if I zoom into my photo here, just behind the subject's hat, there is a little bit of a boat or something here. And the remove tool does a really good job at removing objects that are near the edge of something in cases like this, where we have a hard edge of the hat. So what I can do is go and highlight just a little bit of the edge of the hat and then paint over what I want to remove, let go. And it doesn't really remove the hat in any way. I'll go and do that one more time over here. And in this case, it kind of took away a bit of the hat. So I'll click and paint over it once again, and it will rebuild it for me super easily. So that's the beauty of this tool is that it not only removes things for you in record time, but it also will rebuild different lines in your photo pretty easily with a lot less brain power than all of the manual object removal tools inside of Photoshop. So pressing Command or Control Zero to fit my image to the screen, we have now removed all the boats from the photo and now looks like our subject has the beach totally to herself. And if I turn this object removal layer on and off, you can see the difference that we have there, all done with the remove tool non-destructively because we did it all on this new transparent layer because we have the sample all layers option checked in the options bar while we're using this tool. So now that you understand how this tool works in a basic sense, let's go and talk about a more complex version of using this tool in example number two here. In this example, let's say we want to remove the second couple here in the canoe. We just wanna have this foreground canoe in our photo. Now the reason that this one is a little bit more complicated is because we have not only the objects that we want to remove or the paddle we want to remove here right at the edge of what we want to keep. But we also have a horizon line of the forest back here on the back of the lake. We have the tops of the trees behind the gentleman in the boat. And then we also have lots of water textures and things to remove because of their reflection. So this could be a pretty tedious task to complete with something like the clone stamp tool or one of the healing brushes or something like that. However, with the remove tool, this process actually becomes pretty easy and painful free. But to ensure that we do not go and remove anything from the subject that we want to keep, which in this case is the foreground canoe, we can go ahead and use a selection. But before we do that, we want to continue to edit non-destructively. So I'm going to first create a new layer above the background layer. So with the background layer selected, which is the image layer, I'll just go and create a new layer directly above it. You'll just want to create a new layer directly above wherever your image layer is in your layer stack. I'll double click on that name and call this to object removal. Now we have an object removal layer created that is totally transparent and that's where we're gonna make all our adjustments. But before we go and make those adjustments, we need to create a selection. And whenever you wanna have the most clean edge for your selection possible, you're going to want to use the pen tool. Now I'll zoom into my photo by pressing command or control plus or equals there. And then I'll grab the pen tool by pressing P. With the mode set to path right here, I'll just go and click just outside of my canvas and and then continue on all the way to the edge of this canoe, making sure that we have a clear divider between what we want to remove and what we want to keep. From there, I'll just continue to create a path around what I'm trying to keep in this case. We're basically wanting to isolate what we want to remove from this photo. So just continue to go along the object you want to keep with your pen tool. Again, you can click and drag to curve that path, or you can hold Alt or Option and click on these control arms right here, holding Alt or Option, you can then go and adjust the angle of that path after you have created it. If you're totally new to the pen tool and using it, I'll leave a link below where I have an article on my website explaining everything you need to know about this tool. But for now, I'm just going to skip ahead because it's gonna take me a couple minutes here to make a nice little selection around everything and I'll skip ahead so that it's all complete. So now after completing that pen path and turning it into a selection, which by the way, all you have to do is right click inside of that path and choose make selection after you have
have completed that pen path. Alternatively, while the pen tool is active, you can just go to the options bar and choose make selection. You'll click the selection button here that would be enabled when you have a completed path and then you'll be good to go and have exactly what I have here. But anyways, once you have that selection active, we can now use this selection as an area for our remove tool to basically be stuck inside of because we'll only be able to make our adjustments inside of this active selection area. So to begin, I'll click on my object removal layer and because that's the one that we're gonna be making all of our adjustments on. From there, I'll go and grab my remove tool from the toolbar. I'll make sure that remove after each brush stroke is unchecked because I have a relatively complex area that I need to remove. There's lots of edges and things, so I think I'll have a hard time removing this in one go. I'll then make sure that sample all layers is checked. Now with all that looking good to go, I'll zoom into my photo a bit and I'm going to just use a few different brush sizes to just paint over the subjects that I want to remove. And because I have the selection area, I don't need to worry about painting outside of the lines because I can only paint inside of this active selection. If I try to paint anywhere outside of that selection, it will just be blocked and it just won't work. So I'll just continue to paint all the way around the things that I want to remove. In this case, I'm just going to try to remove everything in one go and then refine things as needed based on the result. But for now, I'm just trying to go over different parts of the subjects in the background here with different brush sizes sizes so that I give the remove tool the best possible chance at success. So now with this looking good to go, I can just press enter on my keyboard or press the check mark in the upper options bar while that new transparent layer is selected. So pressing the check mark, this will now remove the area underneath the pink highlight. And in this case, Photoshop did a pretty insane job at touching this up for us. However, we still have a few issues with this, such as along the edge of the canoe, which we can go and just paint over different areas, press enter on our keyboard and Photoshop will automatically touch this up for us. So just highlighting and pressing enter as I go to speed up this process rather than going up to the check mark, I'll just press enter on my keyboard every time I'm ready to commit to those changes. So this will just create a nice edge of the canoe here for us like that. And then I'll do the same thing around the tip of the canoe. And then there's a bit of a broken horizon line. So I'll paint over that, press enter, fix that up super easily for me. There's a bit of a thing over there, press enter. And now you're starting to get the idea here. If there's any other weird textures, of course you can just go and paint over those as well and Photoshop will remove them for you. Generally, it seems that the smaller the areas that you work with are, the better the results you get with this in terms of not getting too many repeating patterns or weird looking things across the photo. So this is already looking pretty good to me. I just got to touch up this broken water or the broken ripples that are in the background here. They just don't totally blend in. But considering how little effort that was, this is a pretty insane result already. So I'll just continue to paint a few more areas here just to quickly finish this up. Again, just continuing to paint over the areas I want to remove and pressing enter on my keyboard. So now everything is looking pretty good to me. I'll press command or control D to deselect that selection. And now we have pretty much removed our subjects flawlessly. Turning that on and off, you can see how big of a difference that was. It's rebuilt the water nicely and the edge of the canoe is relatively intact, although we could do a little bit of touching up as I'll show how to do in just a second here. But before we do that, whenever you use a selection to remove something, you wanna look around the edges of that selection to ensure you don't have any hard edges of where one texture changes into another texture because of the selection edge. So if I zoom in, like right here, for example, there was a selection area. So if I just paint over that, it will remove that hard edge that once existed. So now with this complete, I could go and just touch up the rest of this canoe here using something like the clone stamp tool, for example. Now I explained how to use the clone stamp tool more in depth in this video here, if you want to check it out. But for now, I'm just going to quickly use it to touch up the edge of this canoe. So accessing the clone stamp tool, I'll set the brush to have about a 75 to 80% hardness there. And now I can just go and scale down my brush, sample nearby like so. And then I can just go and paint over any areas that I want to remove. In this case, that doesn't look totally good. So I'll press command or control Z and I'll actually try to rebuild the edge from here. Hold alter option to sample this area and then I can go and just paint along like that to extend the edge of that canoe and just make it look a little bit more rounded than we had previously. 
So now with that complete, you could touch up any other areas as needed with your clone stamp tool, but turning that on and off, you can see how we have pretty easily removed those subjects from the background, which were taking up a relatively large area around a variety of textures and lines and colors and things that would be generally kind of hard to replace, or at least you would need a bit of practice to replace this with more manual tools like the clone stamp tool. And the best part of all is that all of this was done non-destructively on this new transparent object removal layer because we have the sample all layers option enabled while we're using the remove tool. So now with this example complete, it brings us into our third example, which are some things where the remove tool might not work very well. So in this final example here, let's say we want to remove this skateboarder in the back of the photo. So just like before, I'll create a new layer above the image layer. I'll call this to object removal and then I'll go and paint over what I want to remove. So with sample, all layers checked, remove after each brush stroke unchecked, I'll just go and paint over my subject, plus a little bit more around the edge of the subject so that Photoshop has an easier time blending in this removal adjustment. So I'll just continue to paint over that way and around the entire subject like so. Looking at this as is, everything looks pretty good to go. We have a nice pink highlight around everything, but if I press enter on the keyboard to commit to those changes, look what happens. The background of the photo is totally wonky, and of course I could go and try to continue to touch up these areas, but no matter what I do, I'm going to still have sort of this weird result. And this is the thing to remember with the remove tool and all object removal tools inside of Photoshop. Because although the remove tool does actually feel like magic in a lot of circumstances, you have to remember that it always needs to have other pixels to sample from to rebuild whatever is beneath the pink highlight. So if you don't have an area that can replace what's underneath the pink highlight, then you're never going to be able to remove that object well. In this particular case, because behind the skateboarder is actually more road, so we're going to have like a bus, and some more cars, you'd have more street lines and whatever else would be behind him. All of those things cannot be rebuilt from this photo because we do not have any of those pixels elsewhere in the image to sample from. And because of that, when we go and remove this subject, we're left with this really weird and distorted looking mess behind where we were trying to remove. And that's once again, because we did not have any areas to sample from. Now in the future, when there's generative fill installed inside of the main Photoshop workspace, then maybe this will be a different story. But for now, this is a limiting factor with object removal. Now, with that said, to give you a slightly different example of where this tool is still really worthwhile to use is something like this case over here. If I wanted to remove these two subjects, you would think that it'd be relatively complicated because we have lots of lines and things. So we would need to rebuild the doorway and also these pipes and things that are coming off of the wall. So once again, I could go and just paint over those subjects like this that I want to remove with the pink highlight, press enter, and the remove tool does such a good job at just extending those lines because some of them already existed in the photo before we tried to remove things. So Photoshop was able to sample other pixels to draw from to then remove those areas and extend them as needed. So again, you can just go over the same areas multiple times to touch things up. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you want the remove tool to operate in the best way possible, you just have to remember that there needs to be other areas of your photo that you can sample from in order to replace what's underneath the pink highlight. Otherwise, you're gonna have some issues and things are not going to look very good as you see here behind the skateboarder that we tried to remove. Although the remove tool has become my new favorite object removal tool inside of Photoshop, I still believe there are plenty of reasons to use more manual tools like the clone stamp tool. As I talk about in my course, 21 Day Photoshop Expert, which I'll leave a link for below if you wanna check it out, with certain objects that are against complex textures like that of a toque where there's lots of little tiny threads and things like that that are hard to match up, the remove tool doesn't always cut it. Luckily with the techniques I talk about in this video right here, you can learn exactly how to deal with more complex object removal tasks inside of Photoshop.